Hello everyone and welcome to this celebration of life of Nick Renew. I just wanted to first express my appreciation for everyone who helped make this service come together from donating uh, a stage to helping figure out new ways of broadcasting and sharing to coming together to create and innovate and I just want to say thank you for everyone who made this possible and I also want to thank you who are willing to come and support the family in this new way. As I have said so often, our methods have changed, but the reason we're doing it is not. We're all gathered together today here to express our love and support for this family, to acknowledge the loss of Nick, but also to testify to our hope and the promise of faith that we hold on to. Even though we're doing this from cars and separated, the feeling in our heart and our love for Nick is unchanging. So once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for gathering to show support for the family. And at the end, we're gonna have some instructions about how to exit. Uh, there's gonna be a receiving line with the family, but for some of you who might have to leave, there's also a way to get out. So we will do that at the end of the service. Will you pray with me? God, creator of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all your ways we trust you, and to you with our church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Time tried to stop one cold, cold night, it's true. Somehow I knew you kept on dancing through. <clears throat> you jumped on a flight in the darkest of blues, took a trip to paradise, through the stars and back over the Tell me it's true
days they hang like a picture. Oh, 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 oh. you'll always be my best friend. Some nights I see your smile again. A number I wish I could dial. Oh, 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 oh. I can't wait to talk for a while. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Jeff Pardle, and I wanted to share a few thoughts about Nick before I read this poem. I worked closely with Nick for over a decade at PowerServe. He became more than a co-worker. He became a dear friend. His love for April and the boys was evident in the stories that he shared with me. As many of you know, Nick was kind, intelligent, hardworking, and most importantly, a genuine person. Nick was a thoughtful mentor to many of the PowerServe developers, helping them advance in their careers. To this day, Nick's fingerprints are all over our company. We miss Nick, but he will never be forgotten. April found this poem on Nick's phone when they traveled to Japan in September of 2019. It is written by Mary Elizabeth Fry, and I'll share that with you. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I'm not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am a diamond glints of snow. I am the sun on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am swift uprising rush. On quiet birds in circled flights, I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I'm not there. I did not die. The family will be sharing on the Team Renew Facebook page a longer uh, remembrance video of Nick this afternoon but as we gather today what I wanted to do is simply take some time to reflect all of you came here for a reason all of you have a, a memory of Nick or of Nick and April or Nick and the boys that is special in your heart so Luke is gonna play just for a minute and as he plays I simply ask you just to meditate focus on that memory or memories of Nick that you hold especially dear and then let's give thanks that we got to share those with him.
give you thanks for the time that we shared together. We give you thanks for the way that he made us better and he made our life deeper and richer for knowing and sharing these moments with him. We thank you. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite Nick's friend Philip to come and share a eulogy. To the Renew family, my other family, I offer you my deepest sympathies. I love you all. I am so, so sorry for the loss of this remarkable man, April. This last year, we have watched you serve Nicholas and your family tirelessly and unconditionally. Nicholas and the boys are blessed to have you. You are certainly a devoted wife and mother. Nicholas loved you so much. I know because he told me many times. Throughout Nicholas's treatment, there were two points that he constantly made to me when we would speak. One was that he was astounded at the outpouring of support and the humanity the people who came together for his cause, he was inspired by it. I think he would have us all be inspired by it. The other point that he made to me so many times was that he did not want to be a burden during this time. In his time of suffering, Nicholas Renew was concerned about being a burden to others. And that, and that alone is a testament to who he was. <clears throat> son, brother, dad, co-worker, friend, husband, best friend. Nicholas Renew was all of these things. It is a rare thing to have a friend for your entire life, especially a best friend. And that's what Nicholas was to me. He was my lifelong best friend. I don't remember a time before I knew him. When we were kids, I spent the night at his house all the time. I'll never forget the late night raids of Miss Margaret's kitchen. Nick wasn't part of them, still, good memories. <clears throat> Looking back, I realized we were a bit of a mismatch as friends. You see, Nicholas was uh, a bit of a genius. He and I were very different people, and in a way, I, I think that's what made our friendship grow as strong as it did. We always tried to help each other in the ways that we could. Nicholas would help me with things like algebra, chemistry. I would help him with things like mowing the lawn. It seemed even at the time. You may not know it, but Nicholas was a, an excellent fisherman. As a matter of fact, he and Chris taught me to bass fish at their uncle's pond just over in South Carolina. Uh, fishing was one of the things he enjoyed most. I enjoyed it too, but I wasn't as patient as Nicholas was. If the fish weren't biting, I didn't like it that much. But Nicholas could fish even if the fish weren't biting. And uh, I have reflected on Nicholas so much as I prepared this. And I realize now that Nicholas had the ability uh, to enjoy something uh, as a whole thing, but also enjoy every moment that was part of it, like so few of us. Nicholas had the ability to just be, and he knew what it took to make him content. He could be happy in moments, even if the moments may not be part of a grand experience. The beach was a special place for Nicholas. The Renews used to vacation at St. Simon's Island, and I would usually invite myself to go along. If they minded, I never knew it. We spent our days playing Frisbee on the beach, swimming in the ocean. We stay up all night fishing from the pier. Summer nights on St. Simon's Island are they're cool and they're breezy and the pier has a 
a bench that's made onto the, the rail there on the side and stay out there sometimes till two o'clock in the morning. And Nicholas could just stay there and uh, he really loved that. He would say it was perfect. He wasn't just a good friend. <clears throat> He was a wonderful human being. He was the best of us. He was a man of integrity. He was loyal to his wife and his children. He worked hard to give them a good life. He always had a balanced perspective. He was eager to put himself in someone else's shoes and he wanted to understand all sides of things. He was not critical, he was not judgmental. Being around him made you feel good, it made you feel capable. He was a positive presence and you wanted to be around him. He was quick to forgive, he was humble. When you talked to him, he wanted to know how you were doing. He wanted the conversation to be about you. He was interested to know what was going on in your life. The side of the year he spent studying in Atlanta. Nicholas lived his entire life here in the Augusta area. He told me more than once that he enjoyed living in Augusta. He said he liked being close to his friends and liked being close to his family. And it felt like home. <clears throat> in 2008, he graduated from Augusta State University. Until last year, he worked just downtown. He loved his job and he loved his coworkers. I'm sure that he left a positive impact on all of them, just as he has on everyone else in his life. In 2011, he married April, the love of his life, and he never looked back. In 2013, Nick, April, and Caden welcomed Carter into their family. In 2018, little Lincoln was born. And just as he was with everything else in his life, he was a wonderful father. He always made time for his children played games with him, read them books, helped them with their schoolwork, and he did it willingly and selflessly, and his love for his family and his friends was completely unconditional and unlimited. He was a man of empathy, he was a man of principle, he was led by his conscience and his desire to provide for his family. Nothing was more important. If you know Nicholas, you already know what I'm saying is true. <clears throat> I can honestly stand here before you today and tell you, Nicholas Renew was the best man that I've had the honor of knowing in my life. He taught me what it means to be a friend. I will miss him dearly. I know that we all will. All right, so, sorry. Carter's gonna come play, but take a minute as he, before he does. If you have your phone with you, you can go to the Team Renew Facebook page, and there's a, a video uploaded of, of Nick with some of his favorite people, that'd be his children, and, and April put this together. So you can go and watch it now or watch it later, and now Carter is gonna, is gonna play Amazing Grace.
April asked me to speak with David today and I have been thinking over the last week how incredibly humbling and honoring this is April to be able to be here and so many people could do it more eloquently than I can and I thought about what what would you what do you say about a man who is so great who you could see the way he loved his family Nick was crazy about y'all I had the honor of being in small group with with Nick and he's such an incredibly deep thinker. The way, the questions that he would ask always moved us closer to Jesus. Always. April, our lives intersected in an incredibly difficult, hard moment of life. And here we are still in an incredibly hard moment of life. And the only thing that I can think to say is what was told to us one time that the very worst thing is never the last thing. And that the hope that we have today is that Nick's life, his legacy moves on. It lives on in your love for your children. It lives on in, in Caden and Carter and Lincoln in the way whenever you see that smile start to curl up in, your lip, in their lips, you're going to be reminded of Nick and the joy that he brought to your family. When they thrive and excel in school, you're going to be reminded of all the, the deep thinking and how intelligent Nick was and that he passed that on and as the boys become men who live out with integrity and care for those around them that that's Nick's love living on and carrying on you know one of my favorite places here at the church is this cross and I don't know if you all can see it if you can't see it when you leave I encourage you to look up because it's beautiful as the blue light as the sky shines behind it it stands brightly. That is the hope that we have to offer today. We will find hope, April, you will find hope in the words, in the kindness of friends and family. You'll find hope as you look to your children, as you pivot from this moment forward. Hope will come in all different forms. But the greatest hope that I can think to offer today is found in Scripture. Revelation 21, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her, her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. I became Nick in April's pastor about a month before his diagnosis and we were kind of united in the fact that a few several years before my dad had the same diagnosis and so we could talk about treatments and we could talk about the process and we had some kind of connection of the sheer shared grief and pain and all this was going on and about a, a few months ago I came over to Nick's house and April and Jessica went somewhere and Nick and I just hung out and he was sitting on the couch and he said, can we talk? And I kind of prepared myself because I thought I knew what the talk was going to be about. And I said, sure. And in that moment for the next 30 minutes, I had the hardest conversation in theology as Nick Renew asked me every possible question he could think about. But the one thing that we never talked about was dying. We didn't talk about dying. We didn't talk about what happens afterwards. We didn't talk about any of that. Nick was much more concerned about what the church and what I and others believed about how to care for people who might feel left out or marginalized. Nick was really concerned about a place where everyone could be welcomed in. Nick wanted to know about how he could help people and how the church was helping people. Nick already had the stuff with him and God worked out. I think I was on interview. 
to see if I could join in with this group, him and God and maybe me. Jessica's right, in small group, every time Nick asked a question, it was never an easy question. He didn't do it to be mean or spiteful. He did it because he just thought that way. And he always wanted to look at it from this angle and that angle and maybe that angle. And we went all kinds of places. And I really appreciate a lot of our small groups over there who helped usher um, you in through the cars. And, and they know that what he brought was a, a unique pairing of intelligence with deep compassion. A lot of times people have a lot of one or a lot of the other, but you rarely find someone who is uniquely so, so smart and at the same time so, so caring for other people. The truth of it is today we come and a lot of us have questions. And since I have to be honest because it's Nick and I always told Nick I'd be honest when we answer questions, I have questions still too. I don't understand why some people die so young. I don't understand why sickness causes so many to suffer. And I don't understand the grief and the pain and, and how we process all through it. And I say that as a pastor, not to make you doubt, but to tell you it's only fair to be honest that some of these questions we have about the hows and the whys are something that we find out the answers to at the very end. You see, and what I love about this scripture are two really important things. One, God acknowledges and values and takes seriously our mourning and grief. It is perfectly okay to be here today and to cry. It's perfectly okay to be here and be angry. And you can add, and you can know that I'll be adding this onto my list of long questions I have for God about things that I didn't quite understand. But the point of the story in scripture is to say that God values it so much that at the end of all things, when all things are being made new, when God is redeeming and restoring all the brokenness, God takes time to deal with my hurt and your hurt. God wipes the tears from our eyes. God values and recognizes and acknowledges our hurt, but he doesn't leave us there. He brings us into a place of peace and hope. And while we celebrate Nick's life, and while we right now mourn his loss and we feel it in our hearts, we also hold on to the hope that Nick is experiencing peace and health and wholeness in a whole new way. Nick finally has someone who can answer all of his questions. Nick now is at rest. And what I take from this day of hearing the wonderful words from his friend and from his co-workers, from his family, is that the way I want to honor Nick is I want to make sure that today and tomorrow and the other days that I take time to be really kind. Or as I get so busy that I take time, and I love how you said it, to, to enjoy the moments and not just the whole. To take time and enjoy. If I'm stuck in traffic, I can still find something good to savor and celebrate in that. That's something that Nick taught me. I know you have a lot of things that you celebrate about Nick as well. And I want to encourage you that his legacy lives on in the way we hold it and live into his memory. The way we continue to show love and to celebrate. And as we cry, the scripture says, as we mourn, we mourn like people who have hope. We mourn, but we mourn knowing that one day there is reunification together with Nick. This is a goodbye for a period of time, not a never see you again. In a minute, we're going to have the benediction. The family is going to stand up and they're going to go right under uh, this porta cachet, this little drive through area. And they're going to be there. And if you would like to roll down your window, stay six feet apart and express your condolences in person, 
uh, the family is wanting and inviting you to do that. If you need to go somewhere, if, 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 if you need to be somewhere else, we understand. And you don't have to come through. So here's what's going to happen. As they are coming forward, some of our ushers are going to move these chairs out of the way. And everyone's going to drive this direction towards um, right there where you see Mark waving his hands. You're going to drive that way to my, to my right. You turn that way if you want to see the family. If you need to go, simply turn left and exit out the building that way. So come, everyone come this way. Come right if you want to go drive to the family. Turn left if you need to go. The, our ushers, our parking lot tents are going to try the best we can, but this is also a first for us. We also thank you for your patience. As you're doing that, and there will be a line, that's okay because you have your bulletin. And what we want you to do is there's a big blank spot right here beneath the picture of Nick and the boys. If you would just write the names of everyone in your car and someone's going to walk by. Oh, on the back. Sorry. Never mind. Do it on the back. On the back. Write it here. Write the names of everyone in the car. Hold it up to the window. As, it, as you're in line, someone's going to walk by and take the picture of the names in the car and that's going to function as a guest book for the family. Receive now this benediction. As we go from this place, may we go with the hope and the promise of God. May we go remembering the best things that Nick taught us. And may we go embody that into the world so that the world will always be a better place for Nick Renew having been here. Go now in peace and be blessed. Amen.